I just have to say that before, previously, when I put on the camera, you were also nervous and worried that you didn't have bullet points. And now you're just like, turn it on. I'm fine. Yeah, whatever. Let's do it. Right. Let's just get it done. Let's do it. Now you know what Barb from Jungles looks like. Ta-da! Everyone thought that you were super tall with short black hair. Ah, speaking of tall. Tall, we have panel cards there, tall. See, there's the segue yeah. in this. Here's the, well, I mean, this is the segue. Tall and big. Big Posca pens. I use the big tips and I uh, did my part of this Posca pen project by using Posca on the gel plate. And um, also we use these fun panel cards. Let me get my hand straight. We use these fun panel cards to fit into these awesomely colored number 10 envelopes. So we've been creating these nice, long, unique shaped cards. It's fun. Good colors. Yeah. So Posca on the gel plate. <laughs> on the gel plate. And for me, it was Posca on the gel prints. So again, still using, so I've got small Poscas because I was working a little bit more finely. Because you're small. There you go. Yeah, that's definitely the connection, you <laughs> weirdo. <laughs> so what I did was I used some of Elizabeth's prior stencils. And can you see that? There we go. If you do it like this. Okay, you do it like that. So what I did was choose to use Posca's on the gel prints. So this is her Peacock Pods stencil. This is one of the, uh, no, sorry, this is one of the Van Goghs. I think this is Starry Sky, Cloudy Night, <laughs> Starry Night, I forget what it is. This is my favorite that Barb made, isn't that fun? It's, um, we say it in the video, I'll tell you what it is in the video. And again, they fit in these awesome envelopes. And then this last one is kind of a, just a fun little card that is incorporates some of the new art by Marlene. This stencil, though it is rectangles, the crazy woman named it squares. Who am I squares. to say she tells me I that's what I do. I thought rectangles were a subset of squares. We had this discussion before. <laughs> Somebody who knows geometry, I'm certain, will could... comment below. 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 Below the video. When you expand the description, you will find links to all of the products that we've used. Lots and lots of colors and lots and lots of tip options to choose from. Here Let's go play. go play with Poscas. Indeed. Here we go. Okay, so in this uh, tutorial today, I am going to be making some note cards, some panel note cards that fit into a number 10 envelope. And these are watercolor panel cards by Joggles. And I also have bright, fun, orange number 10 envelopes that also fit the panel cards. So I'm creating a unique shape card with these materials uh, from Joggles. All the supplies are gonna be listed below the video, as always, with links to the products. So this is gonna be Posca pens on the gel plate. This is always a fun process. Um, I really enjoy doing this. It's kind of like doodling, and you can take your time because you're not worried about stuff drying, and then we're gonna print from the Posca pens on the gel plate, we're going to print onto the panel cards and we're going to get an indirect printing method of the markers. So rather than using the markers straightforward, we're going to use them on the plate and then print them. And that indirect method makes them look a little more like paint, a little softer edge, a little less like marker. I think you're going to really enjoy it. So the first step is to create a ghost print with a dark color. And the dark color that I'm gonna use is eggplant, uh, Dina Wakely paint. And I'm going for a dark color that is warm. So the eggplant, it's like a, it's like a purplish and it's a warm color because it's purple that has more red in it. So that's gonna go nicely with the orange envelope. I also chose my Posca markers to go well with the orange envelope. Um, so I've chosen colors that I think will also look really nice with that orange. The envelopes are also available in bright green and bright yellow. So if I was going to use a bright green envelope, I would probably use more cool colors like blues, greens, lemon yellows, and that. So I'm going to pull the ghost print 
with my favorite 9 by 12 pad of sketch rice paper because it has a beautiful smooth surface and it should pull off all the paint that we don't want down uh, in the negative spaces of this stencil. And the stencil is my Klimt collection and it is called Looking Glass. So the sketch rice paper is in the pad with the smooth side facing up towards you and it's the smooth side that you want to put down on the plate in order to pull as much paint as possible and leave us a really good ghost print. So I'm using my 9 by 11 Dina Wakely gel plate and I'm going to roll the color out with a 6 inch Speedball Deluxe sprayer and you want to get a nice thin even layer of paint over the whole surface of the plate. And then you put the looking glass mask into the paint centered and then smooth side down of the rice paper. And this is basically to, to remove all the paint from the negative spaces of the mask and leave us with a ghost print that we can draw on. Now the, this print, this uh, print that we're pulling right now on the rice paper can be a base layer for a collage sheet. So you want to save that so that you can definitely use it for something with more layers. Okay, so I'm going to use the tips of my fingers to get down in between these spirals really well. You want to add a little pressure in the middle of every spiral. And you can see how the rice paper is very malleable. It's, it's dipping down into those open spaces really nicely. This is the beauty of rice paper and this particular pad of paper is that it really goes down there nicely into those spaces and is going to give us a really great impression. So we're going to pull this up and then I'm going to look and see if there's any paint remaining in the negative spaces. And you can see that there's not. We've got this great print that we can use for a future layer and now we've got we've pulled all the paint out of the negative spaces we've got a really clean ghost print we're going to lift up the looking glass mask and then we're going to be left with what we're going to color with the poscas so you can just wait for this to dry it's not going to take that long and um, i am going to use a little bit of a heat tool so i'm going to wave it over the top just to get this to dry you don't want to hold it in any one place for any long length of time or get too close you can use a hair dryer as well. Or like I said, you can go have a cup of tea and come back and it'll be dry. Now, a certain amount of paint will adhere to the back of the mask. So when you pull it up, you usually get little openings in the pattern and that's a, a sort of unavoidable, but it is a nice opportunity for when you pull the print with the final color, and I'm gonna use this carnation pink, you'll see a little bit of that color through the openings in the ghost print and through the spaces of your marker drawing, and it'll just be a nice little pink hue. So don't worry if you don't get a perfect ghost print impression because some of that paint does get picked up on the back of the mask. So now I'm just gonna go through and color in my own doodling way uh, following the pattern of the mask and I have a wide variety of Posca pens colors and tips so I have some very large tips this is a PC7M bullet point I also have some chisel tips this is a PC8K I have several of these in the chisel I find that the bigger tips are a little bit easier on the plate than super fine tips, but I also have smaller medium ones. Um, this is a PC5M. This is a really great size for coloring on the plate. So the, that's probably the sizes that I have. Um, so since I'm going to be using the orange envelope, I'm going to try to put a decent amount of orange in my composition so that it really matches nicely with the envelope. And now I'm just going to let you watch in a little bit of time lapse as I fill in the doodle pattern on the plate with my Posca pens. And the Posca pens, by the way, are opaque and they stand up really nice on dark colors. Um, so they're wonderful even on colored paper stock as well as white.
Okay, so you can see that the chisel tip is really good and the bullet point of the larger sizes are really good for filling in big areas and then that smaller tip of the PC5M is what I'm using for the, the tighter spaces. So I have colored this mostly in now and my panel cards are not going to go all the way out to the edges of the plate so i've colored some area that i don't even need to color but i just find the process of doing this really relaxing and kind of fun and so i tend to do the whole plate even when i'm only going to print some of it so i've got i've gone heavy on the orange uh, to go with the orange envelope and the next step is to again either wait for this to dry or give it a little help and then we're going to pull the print onto the panel card okay so our next step is then to pull the print onto the panel cards and i'm using this carnation pink color to give again a little bit of a warm tone so that any area that shows through isn't going to be pure white but it's going to be this um, pale pink color so we're going to put a little bit of this out over the whole design and you want to make sure you're totally dry underneath there before you do this and then we're going to take the six inch brayer and roll the paint over the entire plate. And then I'm going to roll off onto a cleanup sheet so I can get a real thin layer. So the idea is to get this paint in an even but very thin layer. So I'm now removing some paint with my brayer until you can sort of see the design through it. And you know you have a nice even thin layer so now this gel plate will fit two of the panel cards and you know you can think about where you want to put it do i want the top edge or the bottom corner or wherever so i'm just going to put them sort of in the center here with a little space in between Ooh, i really went over too far okay now there and again, I'm going to use a piece of the rice paper. And since these are going to be note cards, you want to make sure you don't get your dirty fingers all over the back of them. And that's easier said than done. And do as I say, not as I do. So we're going to put this sheet over so that we're not getting our hands in any paint. And apply pressure, keeping the backs of the cards clean and really pressing it down into the paint. You're going to get a little sneak preview when you take this paper off. You'll see the print. I usually let the panel card sit there a little bit longer, but I take the paper off as soon as I apply enough pressure. So you get a little sneak peek as to what it's going to look like. That beautiful indirect method of printing the Posca markers with the gel plate and the ghost print and you can certainly do these prints on rice paper um, I have done them on rice paper I've done them on cardstock I've done them on a lot of different surfaces but today I wanted to make actual panel cards out of them but you could certainly pull those prints on rice paper and use them in your collage process so we're gonna give this a few minutes and Hopefully you do a better job of centering your panel cards on your plate than I did. <laughs> but with any luck, this will be okay. I think it's overhanging a little bit, but the whole thing could have gone that way. So we'll give it a few minutes and then we will uh, pull it. And the nice thing about this cardstock is it's thick and sturdy and it's not gonna stick to the plate. So if you leave it on there a little too long, it's gonna peel up just fine. And it's better that it stays a little too long than not long enough because we want all the paint to pull on the surface of the panel cards. Okay, so it's been about three to five minutes that I've been waiting and the um, card, the panel cards are now ready to be pulled up from the plate and reveal the effect of the Posca paint pen and the indirect printing method. Look at how beautiful that is. Ta-da! And they are going to look fantastic paired with my bright orange number 10 envelopes. Now I've created two beautiful note cards on the gel plate with the Posca paint pens in the indirect printing method. And this is one of my favorite ways to use my Posca paint pens.
Elizabeth showed you how to use the Posca paint pens directly on the plate. My take this time is to use the, the Posca pens on prints that you make from the plate. So I have three examples here. This was made using her Peacock Pods stencil. Again, we have these wonderful new panel cards and I'm working with the black. Here's a happy birthday card. This was her stencil named Squares and I brought in some of the new Art by Marlene stuff. Fancy smanchy green, lime green envelope. And then this was done with the stencil uh, from the Van Gogh release that's named Cloudy Night. So when I do this, I like to pick two colors of paint. I have Dina's color in uh, Dina's paint in Orchid, and this is Sparks named Fairy Wings. So I'm gonna sp I'm gonna spread. I'm gonna brayer out an ombre. Now I'm only printing one card at a time. This is an eight by ten plate, so I don't have to cover the whole piece. You can see kind of where I've been working. So that's more or less what I'm gonna aim for. And then I'm going to bring in, now ordinarily I would do this with a palette knife, but I'm just going to dribble a little bit out and kind of cut it off with my finger. That's more than enough. Grab a piece of paper towel. So now, yes, this is purple or purpley pink and green, and yes, if you overmix it, it will muddy up. But this, I'm just going to do this enough to get this ombre going. And I'm going to bring in peacock pods again. Elizabeth has been teasing me. She calls these avocados. I think peacock pods sounds much better. Or deviled eggs. Or deviled eggs. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of center this like this, and I'm going to take this piece of the rice paper, and I'm going to press. Now, Obviously, this is cardstock, so it's thicker than normal that you would see Elizabeth when she's pressing all of this down, but it certainly is doable. All right, so here we go. How cool is that print? Now, I'm not going to try to work on this because it's wet. So let's print, uh, let's print what's left on another of the black panel cards. And this time, let's come over this way a little bit more so we get more of that fairy wings, which is the green. Now I am going to try to keep the back of this clean because that's the area where I could put a sentiment on it. Ah, okay, so I didn't get all of it, but it doesn't matter. That's the beauty of ghost prints. They're organic and they're messy and you kind of never know what you're going to get, but it works out really well. When I use Posca pens, I like to do dots and lines, and you can see that that's kind of exhibited here. Now the only other thing that I did is I wrote nonsense, whoops, that's upside down. I kind of wrote nonsense text in here. I just wanted to highlight this particular section of the design. You could write a sentiment in there if this was a card. There's a lot of different ways that you can take advantage of the negative space. This is the background of that particular design. I'm using smaller tipped Poscas than Elizabeth did because I'm not trying to color in an area on the plate. I want to make dots or I want to make lines. So if I want to Let's see, if I want to dot around here, this is the PC1M tip. This one makes teeny, teeny, teeny little dots, which is really cool. This is the PC1MR tip. Now this is, so this is a pointy tip, and this is more of a bullet tip. Let's bring that up there so you can see it. And I tend to use this one. This one does have a tendency to spit if you're trying to write, but if all you're doing is dots or straight lines, you're not going to get anything to make a smaller dot than that. But if you want to use the PC1MR, which is more of a, a blunt bullet tip, you can certainly do that too. It would help if that, pa that pen was actually going. There we go. So you can take advantage of the design in whatever way you want. Let's bring this one in because there's a little bit more open space to work with. So if I want to highlight this kind of center group that's coming down here, it's easy enough to do with this pen. If I want to use the 1MR, I, I can do that. Why is it that these pens always decide that they're going to need a moment when you're in the middle of doing something? So let's bring in the 1MR. But again, when you are working, here we go. When you're working with like this, the option about what to do is entirely yours. If you're just a dot and a line person, then by all means do that. But you can build on dots, and that's one of the really cool things. Dots are great. And circles are great, but circles are even better when you fill them in with another color. And especially, obviously, I'm using pink and green, so that's where I'm going with the colors of these pens. But you can see that things get interesting. And I think of this as building in layers. So if I want to come in here and really make this interesting, all I have to do 
is start adding lines. And do I want to go a little bit further? Well, I can. Now I can put a dot at the end of each of these lines. And you grow these doodles and these, you know, things that you're playing around with one little piece at a time. It doesn't really matter how you want to work. Now, if you want bigger dots, this is a PC. I want to say that, you know, I don't know what that one is. Let me grab something that I know. This is a PC 3M. So this also is a bullet tip, but it makes bigger dots and it makes stronger lines. The bigger the tip size, obviously, the bigger the dots and the bigger the lines, but then you can embellish these. There's, there's nothing as simple as a line or a dot until you start to combine lines and dots. And then you realize that you have this, what looks like a very intricate pattern, but when you break it down into its simplest components, you have nothing more than dots and lines there. So to come back to my samples, this is the Van Gogh, um, I want to say breezy night, cloudy night. This, <laughs> this is squares, breezy yeah, breezy, cloudy. It's night, that's what matters. That's what matters. With this groovy lime green envelope. And then this is, we're going to call this peacock parts, even though she wants to call it deviled eggs. Deviled eggs. So whether you use the poskies on the plate or on your prints, you're going to get great results. Okay, what are these? <laughs> So that is how we used our Posca pens on the gel prints and on the gel plate. But there's certainly a bazillion possibilities for you, as well as a bazillion tips and a bazillion colors. There's a bazillion. It's just, there's a whole lot to choose from. Endless pie. Endless possibilities. There you go. There you go. Thanks for being here. See ya. Bye.